Hey, what's going on everyone? So today I'm gonna to teach you some advanced tactics using the Windows Firewall. Now, we're not just gonna turn on Windows Firewall, we're also going to enable IPsec. And it's a really cool capability that I've not seen a lot of people use or necessarily know about. Uh, it's pretty simple to set up. And so it offers a number of benefits, but some of the highlights being it's going to allow for mutual authentication between your endpoints. It's going to allow for integrity checking of the data between your endpoints. And then also optionally, you can encrypt the data between your endpoints. So definitely some cool capabilities and I uh, can't wait to show it to you. So let's dive into it. Okay, so on our Windows endpoint that ends in .11, we can see that the Windows firewall is turned off. We'll go ahead and go over to our Kali box, and we're gonna go ahead and run a port scan on dot .11. Okay, and we can see that because the firewall is turned off, a couple ports get returned. So in order to configure the Windows firewall, we're going to create a group policy. Now I already have a group policy right here, Windows firewall configuration. I'll go ahead and open it. And now the Windows firewall configurations can be found here, computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, security settings, down to Windows Firewall with advanced security. Go ahead and right click, go to properties. Okay, so we're gonna focus on the domain profile. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the firewall on. Inbound connections block default. What that means is that all inbound connections will be blocked unless there's a rule explicitly allowing it. Outbound connections will be allowed by default. What that means is all outbound connections are allowed unless they're blocked. And this is actually the recommended configuration, both recommended by Microsoft and CIS. So one super important critical thing is we want to go into the inbound rules and you wanna ensure that you're not blocking important things like DNS, Kerberos authentication, uh, anything else that you may have. So this will vary depending on your environment, depending on the applications, the services that you use. Next, we'll head over to our endpoint, do a group policy update, and then turn on the firewall. Okay, so we did a GP update, space, forward slash, force, and that updated our group policy manually. We can go into the Windows firewall settings, we'll quickly do a refresh, and we can see that Windows firewall is turned on. If we go to our Kali box here, let's go ahead and do another port scan. So if you remember, we had three ports that showed as open, with the firewall turned off. All right, now even with the firewall turned on, there are still some ports that show up as open. Okay, we can see that even with the firewall, we do have a couple ports that still show as open. So next, let's go back into group policy and turn on IPsec. And just by turning on IPsec, we're gonna see a difference here in the port scanning. Okay, so to configure IPsec settings, we're gonna right click on Windows Firewall, go to Properties, click on IPsec settings, go to Customize here, now we can see we have key exchange, main mode, we can go to advanced or leave it default. But if you go into advanced, you can actually customize the hashing algorithms used and the encryption algorithms. So click on one of these, click on edit, and you can see how you have different options. So ideally in a modern environment, you're gonna set everything to the highest. So some call outs here is if you have older systems, may not be compatible with some of these algorithms, there's also a higher resource usage. So all things to take into consideration. And like I said, it's gonna vary depending on your environment. So I'm just gonna hit cancel out of this and cancel out of this. I'm gonna leave it as default for the key exchange. Data protection, if we go to advanced, this data integrity column over here, if we click on add, we can choose some different protocols here. And again, different hashing algorithms. So the data integrity column is purely if we don't wanna do encryption at all, but we still want to do some integrity checking. If we do wanna require encryption, we just click on this box over here. I'm gonna leave that as advanced because I turned on encryption. As far as authentication goes, I'm going to change it to computer and user-based Kerberos authentication because all my systems here are joined to the domain and we are using Kerberos. So I'm gonna click on okay, click on okay here. The next step is we'll go down to connection security rules. We're gonna right click and create a new rule. 
I'm going to go ahead and choose custom. Now here's where we create a secured connection between our computers. So I'm going to actually click on these IP addresses and set some custom ones. The reason for that is because I don't have IPsec configured on my domain controller. If I only configure IPsec on my endpoints, then they won't be able to contact the domain controller. And then that's going to lead to a whole host of issues here. So I'm going to go ahead and configure the range. Okay, so I've configured the IPs for endpoint one. Now to do the same for endpoint two. Once you've configured both of those, we can go ahead and click on next. Okay, so I'm gonna actually choose on require authentication. I've already tested this in my environment. I know it works. What you may wanna do though, is do a request authentication to where if the authentication doesn't work, it's not required. And so if there is an issue in your environment, you're not breaking your environment. Like I said, I've already tested it. I'm going to click on require authentication for both inbound and outbound connections. Click on next. And then what authentication method would you like to use? So if we wanted to, we could leave it as default because in the IPsec settings, I've already told it to use computer and user Kerberos authentication, but we can also check that here if we'd like. So I'll do that and then I'll click on next. I'm not going to configure any kind of protocols or ports because I just want this entire IP range to use IPsec. And then this only applies to our domain environment. And then we go ahead and give it a name, click on finish. Okay, so now we can see that we have IPsec enabled. All right, now that we have IPsec configured, I'm gonna go ahead and do another group policy update. Okay, so once that's done, we'll go back to our Windows firewall here. Go ahead and refresh this. We can see that the Windows Defender firewall is turned on for the domain profile. If we go down to connection security rules, we can see IPsec connection, the rule we just created is enabled. So now let's go over to our Kali box and do another port scan. Okay, so the scan is done and as we can see, there's no port showing as open. We can just see that they're filtered, meaning that they're probably behind a firewall. So simply by turning on IPsec, we're able to prevent attacks like port scans from happening.